Hey, this is Kevin Purcell with the third video in our three-part series on how to choose a text for preaching. This is part of a bigger uh, video series that I'm doing on how to use Logos Bible software for uh, preaching or teaching the Bible. And uh, we've already talked about in this part of the, uh, the study how to pick a topic. You know, you can use your guides up here. For example, the topic guide or the sermon starter guide to help you find a topic that you want to preach on. We've also talked about using various tools in order to pick a, a, a specific passage. For example, we use the uh, passage analysis tool in order to uh, delineate which verses you're going to preach. You already know you're going to preach on something from Matthew 28 around, you know, 15 to 20. Do you use 15 to 20 or 18 to 20 or just 16 through 19? Whatever you pick. And that tool can help you. Now in this third video, we're going to use another tool that will help us pick passages. It's called the concordance tool. Bible software, by definition, is, a, is almost a concordance itself. Why do you need another tool called the concordance tool? We'll talk about that in a second. You know, I remember the days before using Bible software when you were basically uh, using a book called a concordance. I had a huge, hefty, you know, New American Standard Bible exhaustive concordance. It literally listed every single passage with every word of the Bible. So you could look up the word A, like uh, the article A, you know, single letter word A, and uh, find every single place in the Bible where the word A was <laughs> found. Why you do that, I don't know, but you could. But thankfully, we don't have to do that, carry that big old beast of a book around anymore. You can just uh, search in your Bible software. But the concordance tool does a little bit more than that. In fact, it creates a concordance on every book in your library. Uh, so, you know, doesn't I don't know how big your library is. I've got a pretty nice-sized library, almost 4,900 books in it. And uh, I can pick any book in my library and create an index of that book really fairly quickly within you know a minute to a little bit longer depending on how long the book is and then I can do some interesting manipulation of uh, the concordance tool to find some things in it so this is the concordance tool I've just opened it from the tools menu you go down here in the under the reference column and find the fourth item concordance I've already done that when you do that, it looks like a basic book. You've got your book control panel over here. You know, you can change the size of text. You know, maybe we make it a little bit bigger so you can see it on screen. Up here, you've got three links. This is where you pick your book. Now, I already have the NASB open, but uh, let's say I didn't. I wanted to find it. And so I could find the NASB 95 update. If you like to work with the verse by verse or the paragraph version, whichever one, it doesn't matter. You can open that up. The second one tells you what you're going to search. Now you can search for words, which is what I have showing on screen right now. Or if you prefer to work in the original languages, this is a tagged book. It has Strong's tagging. And so you can work with lemmas, roots, Bible senses. You can also search for, you know, a biblical entity. What does that mean? That's things like, you know, your person, your place, thing, artifact, measurements. And uh, you can find those. And then references, that's not really as useful in a Bible. If you're using another, like a concordance uh, tool on a commentary, you could find how many different references it relates to, like references to other passages. Uh, but we're not going to use references. We're going to stick with words. Now, you can show your range here. What do you want to search? Do you want to search the whole Bible, which is what I've got, all passages? Um, these are your most recent used. Maybe you're going to search just in Ezekiel. But let's go down here and find the Gospels. And so when you do your initial search on the 1995 update of the New American Standard using words and Gospels, you'll notice that uh, it's got a lot here, but there's a lot here you don't really want, like tense or tenses. You know, maybe the word tenses shows up in the New American Standard version of the Bible. I bet it doesn't. So what you can do is you can limit that by the, using the refine box. Some people might have it closed. You just hit that arrow to open it. Uh, this limits how many counts. For example, the most is 2,102. Uh, so maybe you only want to have you know things that have at least 10 hits to 2,102. We'll stick with one for now. Uh, you can limit these like omit numbers, omit common stop words. Stop words are like you know finding a or i or you know words that really aren't that helpful. 
then um, it, maybe you do want to find those. So uncheck that, you know, and that'll so you know immediately you get the, to, and, of. So we want to get rid of those. Now this gives you your languages. So we're going to limit to English only. And then surface text is every single bit of text in the entire Bible. But Bible text is only text from the Bible itself. So let's get rid of words that are, say, in like footnotes or in the tagging part or whatever, that kind of thing. And what you find here is now we've limited it a little bit. And the word not is used almost a thousand times. Said is used. The word group say, say, saying, says, say, sayings. Uh, Jesus gets used a lot. One or ones, that word group gets used a lot. But let's say we get down here and this word for come or coming, that word group. That's interesting. Maybe we'd like to do a series on Jesus talking about his coming into this world. And so we think, hmm, what could we do to limit this even further? So it's talking only about what Jesus himself says. Well, let's limit to just the words in Christ. So notice up here you get all of these limitations. If you don't like one of them, you can get rid of it. But I'm going to stick with this. And only the words of Christ. Notice there's 248 times that one of these words gets used. Click the down arrow and you'll see the list here. And when you see this list, you can start going through this. If you hover over it, it shows a pop-up so you can read the entire verse. You know, law or prophets, I did not come to abolish. You know, maybe you just say, all right, that's an interesting word. So let me uh, right-click that and uh, copy it. You might want to use that. Why did Jesus come? And he might have, you know, five, ten different verses about why he came. And that could be an interesting sermon or Bible study. Maybe you do a topical Bible study, why did Jesus come? Or maybe you do a sermon series on the passages that Jesus talks about why he came. Or you could talk about us coming to Jesus. If anyone wishes to come after me, the Son of Man is going to come. Maybe it's a, you know, a, a sermon series on what Jesus said about his second coming. You go all the way down here and you see a whole bunch of things. So that's the concordance tool. It's very useful and a powerful tool. Uh, this just kind of scratches the search, surface of it. The range of your searches, these arrows will go back and forth in it. This shows, you know, different things that you've used, different uh, concordance searches that you've used. So you can use that drop down. Let's now go back to the one that we've just done. All right, so this has been Kevin Purcell showing you how to use the concordance tool in order to help you find a passage or a topic to preach on or teach on in Logos software.